Hi, my name is Bentley Garner. I'm here to talk to you guys today about uh, chromoly tool building. Primarily in our shop, uh, we do a lot of everything from race cars to weekend warrior guys with just your regular Jeeps that just want a roll cage or a bumper or anything like that. We do metal shaping, but primarily we specialize in TIG welding. So one of the common questions I get online is chromoly tool welding. Um, is it different from DOM and your average alloys or do you need to get a little crazy as far as prep, finish, and filler metal types? And I would say yes to all three. Uh, it's not super temperamental, but there are some tricks of the trade that we're gonna share with you today. All right, so first and foremost, whenever we're dealing with any kind of welding, cleanliness is king. So with chromoly, uh, commonly when it comes right out of the mill, you're gonna have a little bit of a finish here. So on the left side here, you're seeing uh, prep ready to weld. On the right side, you're seeing fresh off the mill. Uh, a little bit of mill scale, even though it is super, super thin in this high quality material, is gonna be a problem uh, uh, with cracking, with inclusions, anything like that. Uh, you know, you might be able to get away with it, but it's not something that it's worth risking. Um, so the way that we like to prep tubes is uh, chuck up your material in your lathe and uh, run it at a, at a slow to medium speed and you know, we'll wrap a, a piece of scotch bright around it and hold on really lightly. Um, this is something that I've only had the benefit of doing for the past couple years since we got a lathe. Um, for years and years and years, just use the regular old hand method. And it's the same thing. You're just gonna get a little bit more of an arm pump going and you just twist right on the section that you're planning on welding and it's gonna buff it up nice and clean, right? So from there, you can acetone after that to get off any dust, uh, use air or anything like that to get you ready and then you're set. Uh, a tube that hasn't been prepped uh, like that is gonna throw off a little bit more soot. You're gonna go through tungsten a little bit quicker because you're gonna get a little bit more of a boil to your, your weld. Uh, so you can see right around the edges here, that's not from touching the tungsten, that's just from welding, right? So you're gonna get a little less of a still pond and a little bit more of a boil when it comes to that. Uh, so as soon as you prep both sides and get you tacked, you have no soot, you have no smoke, you have no funny business going on to mess with later on, and your weld out turns out a lot cleaner, a lot smoother, and a lot less crystallization in your weld. Okay, so second step in this process is gonna be our fitment and our tacking. Uh, anytime you're dealing with chromoly, it is a temperature sensitive base metal. So we wanna, uh, anytime you're introducing heat to it, you wanna slope in and slope out a little bit more gradually. You wanna keep your arc length a lot tighter. Um, you can see I, I favor uh, a lot more tacks over, uh, a lot more smaller tacks over giant tacks to try to hold it in place with one or two. Uh, I don't like to have to go back and grind on anything. So if I've got a big, huge bulge going through my weld, it's gonna stand out really, really well, uh, whether you want it to or not. Um, and in this case, coming all the way around the whole thing with maybe every half inch to an inch with a small, small tack, is a lot more consistent and easier to weld around. Uh, as for the fitment goes, if you have a, in my mind, if you have a gap at all, you need to close it up. Um, the most, absolute most I'll use on maybe a 9.5 or a 120 wall chromoly is a small 16th, like on the lower end. Uh, any kind of a gap that you have to fill with filler metal is gonna cause a lot more heat affected zone coming around the area and it's gonna cause it to be more brittle in that spot. So anytime chromoly, which is already a pretty hard metal, uh, is given a chance to be harder, you're just exposing yourself to the possibility of cracking. So stay away from that if you can. Nice, tight copes uh, all the way through, tacks all the way around, small as you can get, and you should be set. So let's talk torque setup. Uh, the 215 that we're using today, the Multimatic 215, comes standard with a 17 torch. So that's gonna allow you to handle the whole range, amperage range on that uh, Multimatic. Uh, I prefer in my application to switch down to a, a 920 air-cooled uh, size torch so that I can get into the tight spaces in a roll cage and I don't have to lug around a three-line water-cooled torch that I would have on my Dynasty 350. Um, it's great for higher amperage range, but when I'm looking for mobility, I'm looking for lightweight, and when you're doing a long-term 15-hour weld out, little teeny pounds, they add up by the end of the day in a huge way. Uh, another thing that I'm changing out to do chromoly is going to a gas lens over a regular nozzle. 
Uh, you have a couple different options when it comes to that that are fairly standard at any weld supply store. Uh, you're looking at a small lens and a large lens. Uh, I always go for the large lens. It might seem a little bit more spooky when it comes to size, but because of the diameter of the shield gas coming out of the nozzle, I'm able to hang out my tungsten quite a bit farther on this lens than I would on a normal lens. That allows you when it comes into tight corners to be able to get in a lot tighter into the corner without any trouble at all. Um, it was really surprising when I switched over to that beginning uh, when I was beginning tube work, but oddly enough, you get way better coverage, it's way easier and you have a little bit more to grip so you have more control. Today we're going to use the Multimatic 215. It's a multi-process welder, so you get the benefit of having MIG, stick welding, and DC TIG. So today, DC TIG, uh, you get the added benefit of being able to use an auto set feature. So for TIG, it's just gonna give you the range because you have a pedal to fine tune while you're welding. Uh, it's gonna give you the benefit of putting you into the window that you need to be in. If you're just getting into that, that's huge. When you have to figure it out from scratch, it, it can be a, a really frustrating process to limit those variables. Um, so I can switch through and talk about I can switch through and look at uh, amperage 3 16 We can go up to quarter, and then we can go all the way down to 18 gauge, and it's gonna give me the window in amps that I can switch back and forth through. Uh, because I've done this quite a bit, I like to go straight to the uh, uh, standard feature, which is just giving you the full range from zero all the way up. Um, so today we're gonna be running on our wall thickness, which is 095. I'm gonna be running right around 115. So I can dial it in at 115 and then we can set and play. All right, so let's talk filler metals. Uh, we have three that we're gonna choose from when it comes to chromoly. Uh, the first two we're gonna talk about is the ADS-D2 and the 70S-2. Uh, both are fairly common at your weld supply stores. Uh, the arguments are slash pros and cons between the two. Uh, 80 is gonna have an 80,000 tensile strength. 70 is gonna have 70,000. So you got a little bit of loss between the two. 80 is great, even if you're not doing any heat treating, anything like that, it has really close characteristics to chromoly. Uh, 70S-2 is going to be a little bit less on the tensile strength side, but it does have a little bit more flexibility to it. Uh, the third choice is gonna be chromoly. Uh, it's straight 4130 chromoly to match 4130 chromoly. Uh, if you're not gonna do any heat treating, if it's not a thick uh, material that you're gonna end up afterwards heat treating to normalize, there's no reason to even talk about it. Throw it away. These are the two choices that we would stick with. All right, so we're using the 215, which is a lift arc start. So the difference between that and a scratch start is a scratch start, you're going to mash the pedal and strike like a match. It makes it a little bit more unstable uh, with the arc going, and then you have to find your place and go from there. In this case, we're just gonna touch the tungsten to the base metal. We're gonna start the pedal nice and light, and then lift and go, simple as that. So when we're welding chromoly, we wanna slope in and out as gradually as we can. It's a little bit more temperamental, so you don't wanna shock it. It causes it to be a little bit more brittle. Uh, and we also wanna keep our tungsten as close to the material as possible so that that uh, arc cone is a little bit more narrow. So here we have our finished piece. We've got two different choices as far as our size of fillet weld. As we come around on this one, we're just using a 045 uh, for one single pass. One and done, and nothing else to worry about on top of that. Some people prefer for a little bit thicker material or just personal preference. They like to see a weave or a cover pass. Uh, so on the lower one, I used a 035 for the root weld, kept it a little bit smaller and a little bit cooler and then I use an 035 on the cap pass as well. Uh, some people prefer to use a little bit thicker rod. Based on my style and the way that I learned uh, to do a weave, I prefer to use a little bit thinner rod, but it's totally personal preference on the way that you like to weld. Uh, so 035 on the root and cover pass, and 045 on the single pass. For more information on my work, check out my Instagram, at Bentley Garner on Instagram. 
And for more information on the Multimatic 215, check out millerwelds.com.